Welcome to Thai Tech. My name is Emmanuel Cyprian. In this video, I'll be sharing with you step number four of the risk management framework, which is the implement step. In our previous video, we've looked at or we talked about step number three, which is select step. I'll put, a I'll put the link to that video at the description section of this video. Please go check it out. Now, implement step is the fourth step in the risk management framework. What does the implementation step mean? It means that the controls that has been previously selected in the previous step needs to be implemented. The controls that has been selected needs to be configured. The controls that has been selected, they need to be put or they need to be added to the system. So for the protection of the system, that is what this select step is talking about. And if you look at it critically, most of the time when we talk about implement step, we are talking about configuration. We are talking about customization. We're talking about you going to your phone, for example, clicking on the settings to customize those controls that are on your phone. The same thing applies to a system, a laptop, a server. So when we talk about implement, it means they are configuring the server for what the system administrators will call hardening of the server. The purpose of hardening the server the purpose of implementing controls on the system is to help reduce attack surface. Is to making sure that the system is adequately protected before it is deployed into production. So that is what the implement step is talking about. So in this step, we shall be looking at what is the purpose of this step. The purpose of the implement step is to implement the controls in the security and privacy plans for the system and for the organization and to document in a baseline configuration the specific details of the control implementation. What this means is why the control is being implemented, it is essential to document how the control is implemented, the details that is the input, the output, the expected behavior, the expected output of how the control should function. It has to be documented. So that is the purpose of this implement step. And while we're looking at this implement step, let us see what are some of the guidelines, checklist, benchmark for implementation of security control. The NIST publication for implementing security control is NIST 800-70 revision 4. In this particular NIST publication, you will see the national checklist program template in that publication. In this checklist uh, template, that is where you will see the things that need to be implemented, the areas, the, the, the controls that needs to be configured that needs to be implemented on the system, they are all you know, enumerated on that checklist program. Irrespective of any application you are implementing, irrespective of any kind of system you are working on, it is there on the national checklist program. Now, the benchmark for implementation, there are two major benchmarks for implementation. There is the Security Technical Implementation Guide, which is the sticks. The sticks is usually is used by the Department of Defense. It guides them while implementing the security control. It is a guide for configuration of servers or any kind of application, be it Windows Server, Linux Server, uh, any application whatsoever or mobile devices, the stick is a guide on how to implement or how to effectively implement security control. The stick is used by DOD, majorly Department of Defense. 
Another benchmark uh, for implementation of security control is Center for Internet Security, CIS. CIS benchmark is what majority of organizations uses, both private organizations and some government agencies. They use the CIS benchmark. What is contained in the CIS benchmark? It gives you a guideline on how to effectively, how to securely configure a server, configure a system, configure an application. Whatever kind of application you are looking at. If it is the web browsers, Google Chrome, Mozilla, Explore, Mozilla Fire, uh, Firefox, uh, Safari. If it is mobile app. If it is servers, Linux, Windows servers, any kind of application, how to securely configure those applications, you will find it inside the Center for Internet Security. So it's a guide, it's a good guide for you to follow when you are implementing security controls. So you might need to go check it out. So you'll be able to see the reports are there. So you'll be able to see how controls should be implemented. What are the necessary essential basic controls that needs to be implemented on any system? So that is the, these are the guides, checklist, and benchmark for implementation of security controls. Let's look at the task under implement security controls. There are two tasks under implement security controls. Task number one, control implementation, which means go ahead implement the controls based on either the stick or the CIS benchmark. And then task number two is update control implementation information, meaning that once you have implemented the control, go ahead and update the implementation information in the SSP or security and privacy plan. Update it. Let us know how the control is implemented how the control is, is functioning, what is the expected behavior, what is the expected output. So that is these two tasks under implement security controls. Now let me give you an overview of the implementation statement. How does it look like? This is an example of control implementation documentation in the security and privacy plan. As you can see, at the top left hand corner, it says AC11. And then what is AC11? Session log. This is according to NIST 853 revision 4. NIST 853 revision 4. That is this AC11. The name has changed. I'll, I'll please check it out. In revision 5, the name of this AC11 has changed. Um, now, when you come down, you will see the control section, which says session log. It tells you the control requirement, saying that this information system prevents further access to the system by initiating a session log after 20 minutes of inactivity or upon receiving a request from a user and retains the session log until the user reestablishes access using established identification and authentication procedure. And if you come down, you'll see the implementation status telling us that yes, this control is implemented. And then you see the responsible role, which means the information security officer, security analyst, and information system security officer, these are the people responsible for implementing this control. Now, the most important part here is the implementation details. This is how implementation details looks like. This implementation details tells us how the control is implemented, how the control is working, what is the expected behavior of the control, which is what we are seeing here. It says the IMS system administrator, through the use of group, group policy management console within the active directory, enforces session log by terminating the IMS session after 20 minutes of inactivity. User will need to log on again in order to reactivate the session. The system owner and the ISSO review this configuration annually. The network administrator are responsible for reviewing IMS Active Directory 
configuration settings on a weekly basis and ensuring that this configuration is in place. This is how an implementation statement looks like. This is how it is written. This implementation statement guides the assessor when it comes to assess the security control because this is what he will be looking at. So these are what you should take note of under the implement security control, which is the fourth step in the risk management framework. For detailed hands-on documentation reporting on this particular RMF step, please check out my self-paced videos, RMF training videos. It contains all the seven steps. If you need the video, please reach out to me so we can discuss on the discounted price for this video. If this video has been helpful to you, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and then turn on your notification button. Thank you very much.